Hello everybody, I'm Tim Cooper from National Parks at Night and today I want to continue talking about Lightroom's local adjustment tools. Now uh, back in early March uh, I did part one of this post and it was called how to use Lightroom's local adjustment tools uh, for night photography. Now of course this is good for any type of photography um, but uh, we're going to talk specifically about uses for night photography in this uh, post. Um, and that last post I talked about how to use the radio filter and how to use the graduated filter. Uh, today what I would like to do is to dive into the local adjustment brush, uh, perhaps the most powerful of all three of the local adjustment tools. Um, but before we get into that, uh, why don't you take a moment to subscribe on the screen below so that uh, so that you're first to get our videos when they come out. All right, so let's get right into it. As we mentioned in our last post, uh, the local adjustment tools are right in the top here of your basic panel. We've got our graduated filter right here. Um, we've got our radial filter right next to it. And of course, we've got our local adjustment brush. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the local adjustment brush. But just for a quick review, basically how all of these tools work is that we are going to um, lay out some sort of uh, overlay and then these uh, sliders in here will affect that area under the overlay. So with the graduated filter, if I click on that, then what I'm going to get is these, uh, uh, these sliders. Of course, I can move them to my heart's content. Nothing happens until I draw out the overlay. So let me just double click effect to reset this. I draw out the overlay, nothing happens. And now I come back and I move my exposure slider or whatever slider I want. And then I am able to see the change um, underneath the overlay. Um, all of the adjustment tools are marked by these pins. And when the pin is black like that, it is active. Holding your mouse over it for uh, a second or two will show you the mask or the overlay. The other way you can see the overlay is to click show selected mask overlay and you can click that off again as well. If you want to delete this, just make sure you're on that particular overlay and then you can hit your delete or backspace key. Okay, so we're gonna go to the local adjustment brush and again, um, if you're interested in seeing how the radial and graduated filter uh, tools work, uh, check out our first blog, which is called How to Use Lightroom's Local Adjustment Tools for Night Photography. Um, and you can find that on our YouTube channel. Um, or if you go to uh, nationalparksatnight.com, you can check out our blog page. Okay, so we're gonna click on the local adjustment brush. And instead of drawing out either a graduated uh, overlay or a radial overlay, what we do with this brush is simply to paint. So in this uh, situation, what I would like to do is I would like to darken down the sky a little bit and lighten up um, the statue. So what we'll do for starters is just show you how this works. So I am going to uh, simply click and paint a little line here. And then what I'm going to do is come over and lower my exposure. And you can see the area that I uh, that I painted in. That's called the overlay and there is our pin. All right. Now, I wanna start over again. So what I'm simply gonna do is click on that pin and then hit my delete key and that gets rid of it. Now, the brush has several different attributes that we can work with. First is the size. So when you go to your size, the brush moves over right to here so that you're able to see the size of the brush. I find that a, a relatively inconvenient but necessary uh, slider. What you should really get used to is putting your mouse over the image, hovering your cursor over the image, and using your left bracket key to make it smaller or right bracket key on your keyboard to make it bigger. This will keep you from having to go back here every time you want to change your size, which will probably be pretty often when you're painting. The next is the feather. And when the feather is at 100, you see that the concentric ring is very large around the outside. When the feather is very small, you don't have a concentric ring. So let's put it about halfway in between now and you can see that the area of the, uh, where the two circles are is the basically the fall off zone or the, the gradient. So let me give you an example here. I'm gonna lower my exposure and I'm gonna put my feather at zero 
this will be a very hard brush. And by the way, I'm also using my two fingers on my trackpad to make the brush larger and smaller. And I will simply paint a line. And you can see how hard that edge is. Now, with the same size brush, what I'll do is put the feather all the way up to 100%. And again, paint a line. Now you can see the edge is very soft. One brush is not better than the other. It's just sometimes you need a hard edge and sometimes you need a soft edge. Um, so you make your choice. Uh, the keyboard shortcut for that is hold down your shift key and tap your right bracket to make it softer and your left bracket to make it smaller. So in that way, once again, as you're painting, you can actually use keyboard shortcuts to change the the size or the attribute of the uh, or the feather attribute of the brush without having to go all the way back over here. All right. Lastly in the attributes here, we have flow. And flow is basically how much the brush is, let's say, spitting out. So, for example, let me just uh, go back and delete this one. And I'll put my brush at 100% uh, hardness here or 0% feather, however you want to look at it. And if I paint a line with my flow at 100%, I will get the full amount of this exposure coming through. So this exposure is minus 2.85. That's exactly minus 2.85 in there. All right. If, however, my flow is at 50% and I paint, it's only giving me half of this exposure coming through. Now, that seems pretty cool. Uh, but there's a problem with it. Um, if you need to paint and then paint again and paint again, you can get weird um, overlaps. So for example, if I paint and then I want to paint right next to it and that edge comes close, I'm getting this weird overlap in here. And that can be very difficult to get rid of. So my suggestion is rather than making multiple paint strokes at a lower flow, Instead, what you do is put your flow to 100% and paint the whole area that you want to paint in. Then, if you want to change the amount of this uh, change coming through the overlay, simply do it with your sliders and then set it wherever you want it to be. Now, that's not to say that I never use a lower flow, but I just generally don't use a lower flow when I'm painting in my initial mask. A lot of times what I'll do is use my erase tool at a lower flow. So let's look at the erase tool. I'm going to go in and lower my exposure here. And let's say I wanted to erase some of this. What I could do is click my uh, brush from A, which is um, basically the plus brush. And you can see there's a little plus icon in there to erase. And now you'll see a minus icon in there. And you still have access to all the different attributes, the size and the feather. But now when you erase, you're going to be taking that out. And you can see I just took that out at a lower flow. So let me pull my flow all the way up to 100%. And I'm basically going to take that out now. So you can add to the mask or overlay by um, painting in with your A brush and choosing your particular attributes that you would like to use and then you can remove by using your erase tool. So this is a very handy way to create masks and local adjustments in Lightroom and indeed it's probably the most accurate of the uh, three different ways the graduated tool, the radial tool, and the paintbrush tool. Alright so the last thing down here is called auto mask and what auto mask does is try to help you find the edges. So let me get rid of this mask and let's see, we'll put our exposure real low here. And if auto mask is unchecked, wherever I paint, it is going to darken because my exposure is lowered. However, if I was trying to go along the edge of this line very carefully, you can see how it is going into the church steeple itself. And that's not what I want. That's where auto mask comes in handy. So let me delete that one and check auto mask. Now what I can do 
is as long as my plus mark doesn't get into the church, right now my plus mark is outside of the church, I don't want it in here, I want it out here. If I do that, it's going to try to find the lines. And you can see I'm just putting my plus mark very close to the edge here. And it very carefully tries to find the lines. Does it always do a perfect job? No. Is it a big help? Absolutely. Remember a few things. If your brush is feathered like mine is, it's going to uh, take that into consideration and try to make a softer edge along this particular edge. Let me zoom in and show you. All right. However, if my brush is less feathered or smaller as it is now, it's going to make a slightly harder edge and that's going to be shown you can see how this is a little darker than that area is right there um, because it's a harder edge so we had started with a brush that was a lot bigger more along the size of this and it was also softer and I was pulling my plus mark right in there so between brush size and feather you can really change how it's going to find that edge all right. Now, anything that we do in Lightroom or in Photoshop, when we're trying to do a very severe edit like this one is, because I'm really darkening down the sky, it's always going to be very, very difficult to make those edges perfect. And arguably, something like this is going to be much easier in Photoshop. But if you're not using Photoshop, this is the tool for you. So remember, though, if you're making um, slighter or less severe adjustments like saying maybe just lowering the highlights a little bit now see how you really don't see that edge so when you're trying to push things very very far the edges can be difficult if you're doing a minor edit or not so much it's going to be much easier to pull off and make it uh, look realistic now the auto mask is great um, for going around edges but if you're painting somewhere in here like say in a big open space like this, then what may happen is you may miss areas because the plus mark has got to go right over every single area for it to choose it, right? And one way you can check is by hitting show selected mask overlay. So you can see here that I did miss some areas and specifically right in here, it gets a little wonky because my plus mark didn't hit it. So what I find is it's easiest to uncheck the auto mask, paint the big broad areas in as you need them, and that way you'll be sure that your brush gets everything in those areas. And I won't spend too much time doing this so we can move on to the next image. But then what you do is once you've done that, um, then check your auto mask and come in very tight to the edges. All right, so that's the way you want to do it. Auto mask on the edges, auto mask off for the big broad areas. All right, so now once you've painted in your mask, you can take your uh, selected mask overlay off and you can begin to darken down and see how you like your sky. And of course, you can paint it in like this or you can paint it in um, via uh, using the, uh, uh, the mask overlay, whichever way you like. All right, whatever's easiest for you. But, and I'll just do this real quick just to finish it off so you can see it. And in pretty short order, you can have a slightly darker sky, which may fit the, uh, uh, may fit the composition a little bit better. All right, so the idea here is that by using auto mask, we can get very close to the edges. Unchecking auto mask, big broad areas. We paint in the mask and then we can change our exposure and uh, let it suit our needs. Just remember, if you try to push things too far, the edges will always become a little bit easy to see and it's gonna to begin to look fake. So the more severe the adjustment, the, uh, uh, the better the mask edge needs to be. So try not to push things too far. Even something like that's gonna look pretty decent. All right. The other thing is, is you always want to zoom into 100%. So you may not notice things like this at this small view, but when you zoom in, you can see I missed a spot, all right? Or zoom in up here 
and you can see my auto mask missed the spot around the cross. So this can be pretty uh, uh, tedious little work depending on how fine a detail that you need and sometimes there's nothing to it but just to get in there and do it manually. All right, so that's basically how the local adjustment brush works, folks. So how does it work at night? Oh, well, I use this local adjustment brush all the time for many, many different things. Um, so, oh, so it's not just for brightening and darkening, right? So this is a, um, a shot we did down in Borrego Springs, and it was a group uh, light painting effort. And um, uh, several people had different color flashlights. So this is a slightly different color than that is there. Um, and I want to fix that. So our local adjustment brush tool is not just about darkening and lightening. We also have color and exposure, um, whites and blacks, clarity, dehaze, um, color balance. It's amazing what we can do. So let's try to get these uh, humps of the, the back humps of the snake to better match um, the head of the snake or dragon. All right, so once again, I'm gonna double click on the word effect to reset all of these sliders. And I am on my brush, double click checking on that. And I'm gonna to begin to paint here. All right, now at this point, I can't see what I'm doing because there's no change here. So I have no idea whether I'm painting outside the lines or not. So I'm gonna hit my selected mask overlay. Oh, okay. Well, the problem here is the overlay is red which is a little bit difficult to see against this orange uh, field. So what I can do is I can hit Shift and tap my O key. And as I hold down Shift and tap my O key, it's gonna cycle through the different colors that you can choose for your mask. So now I'm a little, uh, it makes it a little easier for me to see. Now one problem I see a lot of folks uh, having is that they'll, they'll paint like I am right now um, with this area very small, that's kind of hard to get in and do delicate work. So zoom in a little bit, you guys. Okay, let's use that screen. Um, okay, so I am on auto mask, which is what I want at this point. Um, so I'm staying within the bounds. See how my plus mark is not going outside that line. And I'm just very closely coming in and painting. Now, you can see the speckling, and that's what happens when you are on auto mask because there's enough different values in there that the brush isn't picking them all up. And that's why I said that you should use your um, auto mask unchecked when using the large broad areas. Okay, so you can see that happening right in there. It's not picking up everything. So once I get an area done or I get the edges done, I will come back and uncheck the auto mask and then go in and paint and make sure that I'm getting everything else selected. Okay, so no reason to go overboard here. We're just doing a rough shot so you guys can see basically how this works. So I'm now going to uncheck my selected mask overlay. Now we'll look to the color balance and brightness and clarity and try to make this match this better. Well, this looks a little bit more red. So let me add in a little bit of green and then a little bit of yellow to push it away from the blue. And you can now see that that orange matches this orange a little bit better. All right, now as I zoom in, it looks like the detail's a little bit less back here as well. So I'm gonna increase my clarity. And you can see I'm starting to get a little bit more texture in there. I could perhaps run a little bit of contrast up, something like that. And now that I've done those things, the color looks pretty accurate, but maybe I'll do just a hint more yellow. All right, that looks good to me. Now, if it feels a little too bright, which it does, I don't want to draw your attention back here. I want it to be on the head. Then I'm just going to lower the exposure a little bit just to make it darker. But now we've married the colors closer together. If you want to see the before and after, you can slide down to the bottom of this and click your uh, uh, little filter on off button. So I'm going to click it off and keep your eye over here. When I click this off, that was the original. That's after the work has been done. Original and the work has been done. All right. Now in an image like this, 
I'm basically going to go around with my local adjustment brush and make little highlights and color changes where I want them to be. So for example, the light coming in here didn't hit the teeth quite as much, but hit this area quite a bit more. So if I wanted to downplay this area, what I would do is I would go to new and create a new mask. So I'll click on new, double click effect. Now you see the pin is gray, meaning it's non-active. So the minute I begin to paint, I am creating a new mask. And this time I'll just lower the exposure a little bit. And I'll just paint in the cheek. All right, now this is the active pin because it's black and darkened in. And now I can readdress my exposure to make it feel a little bit more reasonable. I um, just want to darken that down a little bit, something like along the lines of that. And then I'll create a new mask. So once again, I'm going to click new. And this time I'm going to go in and just paint up the teeth a little bit just to brighten those areas somewhat. So I'll raise my exposure up and put it on auto mask and you can see I'm just going in and painting the tooth. Once again, it's missing little areas because it's on auto mask, so I may have to go back in and paint that, but the auto mask really helps us with the edges. All right, so that's probably a little over the top, but that's fine. Um, I'll go back and readdress that. Notice I'm using my bracket key to make my brush real smaller, to make my brush smaller and a little bit bigger. And in this way, I don't have to keep going back to the size slider over on the right hand side. All right, let's call that good for now. And I will just lower that exposure a little bit to make it somewhat more realistic. And if I need to catch all of these areas that are not um, painted in here, I uncheck auto mask and I begin to paint and make sure everything has got there. Once again, you can always go to your show selected mask overlay to make sure you've got it all. Excellent, and I'll zoom back out and see how that looks overall. I can see that looks fake. So we'll bring our exposure down just a touch more. And now we've brightened it up a little bit, but it doesn't look terribly fake. And I could go in now and paint up some of these other teeth if I feel like I need to do so. All right, so in that way, you can go around and really begin to craft your image, lighter areas, darker areas, um, uh, changing the color, whatever it is that you need to do. And um, in certainly every discipline of photography, this is important, but especially in night photography where you, uh, where you have lots of little things that you may need to deal with. So that's it for today, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you found that uh, to be helpful and you can make use of these local adjustment tools. Um, and remember, we're always interested in, in constructive feedback. So if you want, uh, uh, drop us a note in the uh, comments section below. And um, you might also want to consider signing up for our blog post. So um, we do these once a week and uh, sometimes they're videos, uh, sometimes they're written. Uh, they come in all shapes and sizes. But uh, if you go to uh, nationalparksatnight.com, uh, you can sign up for our blog post and it'll uh, let you know when they're out. So thanks again, everybody. I'm Tim Cooper from National Parks at Night. Hope you all have a great day.